We're back with uh, the second part of our editor scripting tutorials and uh, for this one we are going to jump into uh, editor windows. So on the last one we did um, we went over custom inspectors and we made ourselves uh, a custom inspector that let us set the vertex colors for any objects. So we're gonna expand on that and take the vertex colorizer and move it into a window so that we can see how, uh, how windows work. So uh, in the scene, uh, there's not much here. This is just our, our vertex color material from the last one, the same shader as before, that just uh, has vertex colors. And we have our mesh filter extensions, which uh, the, last, um, the last round, the algorithm was pretty silly on there. So this one actually contains a, a much simpler version. It's the same thing, sets the vertex colors and takes in a top color, bottom color and a vertical offset. The only difference is uh, instead of calculating the bounds ourselves, we just use the bounds that are already calculated for us. All right, so let's jump right in. So uh, for any editor scripts, as always, we have to put, a, put the script in the editor folder here. And once we get in here, we're going to want to make this a subclass of editor window. And that's going to be how Unity knows that it's a window. So uh, in order to show this window now, we're going to want to uh, add a menu item of some sort so that, uh, so that we can actually display it. And uh, Unity makes it really easy to, to extend the actual interface to have, uh, to have its own menu items. So uh, all you have to do for a menu item is use the attribute menu item, appropriately named. And uh, we'll call this our fancy tools and we'll call it show editor. Okay, so as is, that'll, uh, that'll actually add the menu item for us. So we can confirm this by going back over here and you can see we have the show editor. It doesn't do anything yet, but it's there. So there's also some other things we can add to this. Uh, if you wanted this to be able to be activated from a keyboard shortcut, for instance, you can, uh, after the name, you just put a space and then you can uh, you can use different modifiers to actually uh, bind to different keys. So in this case, we'll do a, a percent %g, which maps to Command-g on a Mac. And Unity also has a way for you to be able to uh, make that active or inactive based on uh, whatever's happening. So if we were to make a validator, we're going to want this to actually return a bool. And uh, if we return true, the menu item will be active. If we return false, it won't be active. And the way you tell Unity that you actually uh, want this to be a validator is with uh, the second parameter here. And we didn't get autocomplete for some reason, but so is validate function. So now if we go in here and return false and we jump back into Unity, you'll see that this is going to be disabled. So for this particular case, we're going to just always want it enabled, but uh, there'll be times you'll maybe want to change it based on the scene that's active, the selected objects, or various other things. So uh, for this, we're gonna, the editor window we're going to make is, uh, is going to show a list of all of the selected game objects, and then uh, we'll just be able to click a button to apply the vertex colors to any of them. So Unity has another uh, method for this already here. So on selection change will happen. Uh, this will get fired anytime the selection in the project view changes. So we'll just dump a log in here so we can go ahead and, uh, and make sure this is functioning. And we can see that it's not doing anything right now. And that's because our editor window isn't being shown. So let's fill in the code to actually show our editor window so we can get it up and running. And the way you show an editor window is Use the editor window class and the get window method. And uh, this will take in the class of it. It's a generic, so you just put in your, your class name here. And uh, once you're in here, you get a couple different options. Uh, actually, nine to be exact. Uh, you can go through these on your own, but basically, uh, it, what it lets you do is it lets you set where it's docked and if it's focused and if it's a utility window or not. For our particular case, uh, we're going to use the variant 
here. So we, we do not want it to be a utility window, and we'll call it our fancy editor. So now we jump back in here and let's see if this works. So we go to show editor, and sure enough, here's our editor. So just so we can see what a utility window looks like, we're going to swap that out and then show the editor. You'll see it's one of those uh, modal windows like the build setting screen, and it doesn't let you dock it anywhere. So most of the time, you want to just set that to false so that you can actually take the editor window and dock it. So now we can have it docked over here and it works just like any of the other dockable windows. All right, so now we have our, uh, our editor window up so we should be able to change the selection and look at the logs and sure enough, every time the selection changes, this method's called for us. So what we're gonna wanna do is uh, every time the selection changes, just uh, grab all the game objects that have a mesh filter and save them. So anything with a mesh filter is something that we could modify the vertex colors on. So we'll make a, a list here of, we'll call it selected game objects. And it's just a list of game objects. And uh, we're gonna need to do a little bit of filtering. Uh, so you can see I uh, imported system.link and uh, for this we're gonna wanna filter only the, the game objects that have mesh filters. So we'll just do a a simple link query. So Unity has a uh, selection class that gives you access to all kinds of goodies. You can get the active game object, active object, transform. For us, we're going to take the game objects and then we're going to filter them. So we'll just do a simple uh, link query here. We're going to say any game object where there is a mesh filter, we're interested in that. And then we'll to list it. All right, so now we have our selected game objects covered, and we're storing them in the selected game objects parameter. So now we need to actually make uh, a UI for this. So we're going to use a pretty standard, just like any other model behavior, you get an on GUI. And um, in this on GUI, we're going to want to just loop through those selected game objects so that we can uh, you know, show maybe the game object name for each one. Then we'll stick a button next to each one that lets us apply the vertex colors. So um, first thing we want to do is make a make a scroll view because uh, if we have uh, if we have this window docked and uh, we only have a certain amount of real estate, we we'll want it to make sure that it's able to be scrolled. So we we'll use editor GUI layout and begin scroll view, and you'll see this takes in uh, a scroll position. This is how Unity remembers the position. So for now, we'll just stick that in there, and we're going to go ahead and make a, a vector 2 so that we can remember that scroll position. And you'll see also that this returns the vector 2. So it'll return the new scroll position. So we want to store that as well. That way, the, this window can actually be scrolled. And just like uh, anytime you're dealing with a media mode GUI, you have to make sure that you match up your begins with ends. So now we're going to end the scroll view. Okay, so now we have a scroll view set up. We need to be able to display our game objects, so we'll just loop through them. So we have our selected game objects here, and now we're looping through them. And we want to display the game object name, and then next to it, a button to be able to apply the vertex colors. So um, what we're going to want to do is start a, a horizontal section here. So we'll use begin horizontal. And of course, we're going to want to end the horizontal as well. So we'll get those all wrapped up and ready to go. And one strategy for keeping track of these is to use uh, brackets. And you can do that for everything here. And we'll just stick some brackets in to make it, a, it makes it a little bit more clear. Because when you have all these begins and ends everywhere, it can get pretty confusing. And uh, by sticking the brackets in, Mono Develop will indent properly for you. So all of your, your code gets indented nicely. So the first thing we'll do is we'll stick a label in showing the game object name. Except we actually want that uh, to be a prefix label. And we have access to our game object now, so we'll stick the game object name in here. So let's go back in here, make sure we have no errors, and sure enough we don't. So uh, let's stick, uh, let's stick a couple game objects in, and then we'll create ourselves a cube and we'll create a sphere in here 
And how about a capsule? Let's just spread these out a little bit. Okay, so selection's changing, and this certainly has a mesh filter, but you can see it's not changing down here. We actually have to click in it, and uh, that's not what we want. We want that to, that to actually update as the selection changes. So we just have to tell Unity, whenever the selection changes, we get a new list of selected game objects here, and we just want it to repaint. So by doing that, you can see when we click here, it's actually updating now in real time. And you can see we select these other game objects, and these aren't included in this list here. That's because they don't have mesh filters. Okay, so I'm going to stick our material on here. Okay, so we have a material that shows vertex colors on there now. And all we need now is a button. And the familiar GUI layout.button will do the trick, and we'll just say apply vertex colors. And uh, just like last time, we're going to want to actually apply them here, and then uh, we'll want to make sure, we actually want to make this an if. We'll apply them, and then uh, like last time, we'll want to make sure that the scene view repaints, so we're going to tell it to repaint. Okay, so just like before, um, very similar to the last time, we're going to need a, a couple uh, I-bars here to handle our top color, our bottom color, and our vertex color offset. And uh, I'm just going to paste in a, a big blob of editor GUI stuff here. And this is, uh, this is basically uh, just a, a slightly fancier version of what we made last time. This one uh, will have uh, the top color and the bottom color like before. And it now has a swap colors button so that you can swap the top and the bottom colors around. And it's just laid out a little nicer. So if we go over here, we can see, uh, okay, so now we have our little GUI in here. And if we start selecting objects, you can see we get the apply vertex colors button next to each one as we select them. So now we just have to fill in that method. And all we have to do here is grab the mesh filter. And we have our extension method here, set vertex colors. And we have top color, bottom color, and then our vertex color offset. All right, back into Unity. So let's uh, take our sphere and let's make this sphere go blue to black. So if we apply these vertex colors, that happens right there, and we can change this around. And uh, can also, we'll grab the capsule and the cube make them nice and bright Maybe a nice yellow to an ugly green and since both of them are selected now we have two different buttons here and we can just apply them both modify it a little bit, we can swap the colors if we want so that we get it uh, upside down to make that a little more obvious now so now if we apply this you can see we can change these all in real time here all right, so that's the basics of, uh, of editor windows. And uh, these are incredibly useful and a good building block uh, after, after looking at custom editors and kind of like the, it's, it's the next step is, is learning these editor windows. So with the editor windows, we're gonna expand in future tutorials and actually start making our own custom UI in the scene view here. And we can grab events in the scene view and we'll be able to do all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, you know, play with the editors, make yourselves a, some some custom editors in here. I mean, you can do anything you could imagine. You can you can do in here. You can add components. You can make prefabs from this. You can do all kinds of goodies. But uh, for now, we'll let you run with that, and we'll come back with another tutorial that uh, that expands on everything we learned.